Councillor Cordova. Thank you, Mayor. So my first, uh, I just want to thank the author and the authoriser for this work and the significant tree policy um, is, is an important one. It's interesting here that the trees that we're talking about is uh, this tiny proportion of all of Kingborough's trees. And unfortunately, it's it's still a very small proportion. So trees we know hold an enormous benefit for health and well-being, for ecosystem services, for biodiversity and for mitigating the climate emergency. But of course, here it falls within the purview of strategic planning and development services, which by its very nature is geared not towards necessarily environmental sustainability, but instead it's geared towards a human-centric dominion and, and hegemonic approach. Now, that's not a criticism of strategic planning or development services. It's merely a reflection on a larger system that is in dire need of reform. However, it's an opportunity for us to consider an environment in all policies approach. And I'm always um, in feeling mixed emotions when I come across the significant tree register in that we're looking here at only 33 trees have been nominated. 11 are suggested um, for inclusion. Um, at my last check, there were 23 trees on the significant tree register in total. And yet we know for a fact that if you look at the significant tree assessment criteria of aesthetic significance, size, age, landscape significance, historical significance, rarity of species, variety or genome, and unusual physical features, I think we could all, um, based on that assessment, there should be thousands of trees um, that are that are in line for protection. But unfortunately, that's not the case at the moment. I do have a couple of questions um, because I think we really ultimately need to reformulate our approach to the significant tree ro register, for example, to have an exclusion, a by exclusion or specific exemption approach. So, for example, we're looking at a lot of trees here that are 80 or 100 years old. My first question would be, why isn't there an automatic um, protection on all trees over the age of 80 years old? Because we know of the ecosystem services, the health and well-being benefits that they provide and the biodiversity importance of trees uh, over that age. So why wouldn't we have a system by which all trees over the age of 80 are automatically named as significant unless by exclusion or specific exemption? That's my first question. Ms. Quinn. Through you, Mayor. Uh, I think this is a, a, it's an interesting question and to enable it would would require quite a lot of assessment work, um, which would also go hand in hand, I guess, with a um, street tree policy, because it really takes quite a lot of audit work that we don't have that data. So some of that could be remotely sensed to work out the size of trees. Um, and I get this after you actually could identify which trees they were, it would then require changing uh, the statutory tools. So that be the planning scheme, whether council had its own tree policy and it could it could list them there for to manage things on our own land, as well as a significant tree policy um, and any potential future bylaw that regulated trees on private land. So all possible potentially except the planning scheme which we don't have as much control over what those rules are. Thank you and through you Mayor I think that's a ringing endorsement for a street tree uh, strategy um, which as you'll know I'm a huge proponent of. Um, I've got a couple more questions though what is the cost of having trees on the significant tree register and this is speaking to that point that there were 33 trees nominated what possible benefit is there in denying those 22 trees entrance onto onto the register? If there is no cost or minimal cost, you know, why not add as many trees as possible? Ms Quinn. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think the answer to that is about the rigour of the significant tree register. So I think it's really important that the significant tree re register has a whole lot of rigour so that we don't then end up listing all of our trees on the significant tree register and it just dilutes the significance of them if you like. So it is for those particularly special trees that meet the criteria. So um, there are 245 trees that have been recommended. So yes, there are 11 nominations, but within those there are 245 trees. Um, so there are a lot more than what it might look like and there are already 425 trees on the register. So I, I do in some ways agree with you, but I also would not want to dilute the importance of those trees by adding all trees, if you like. Thank you. A couple more questions, Mayor, but I would just make the point that 
for example, the Tasmanian Wilderness World Heritage Area is some hundreds of thousands of hectares, and it doesn't dilute the significance of, of the Twa to have protected that entire area. So I think we're probably leaning towards protecting uh, too few trees in order to, um, you know, not dilute the um, the significance of the significant tree register. But my next question is actually about um, how a situation emerged in which there were some trees that were proposed for listing, but they've actually got already a development application um, plan for removal in place. So, for example, on page 30, item 35, um, it's DAS uh, 200782. Um, so that was a tree that um, really it meets three of the criteria at least, and yet it's been deemed, um, it's already, it's already, I guess, had its death sentence put on it. Um, how how can a situation like that emerge? And um, how do we make sure that that doesn't happen again? Ms. Quinn. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, that situation emerged from my understanding, and um, Tasha Tylemore may be able to add to this answer. The tree was actually nominated after the development application had been approved for the subdivision. So council had already assessed the subdivision, allowed that tree, I think, to be removed um, and offset, and then the nomination was put in. And so if that tree, the trees at this point in time without the bylaw in place don't have a level of protection while they're nominated, don't have a statutory level of protection while they're nominated. So it's not until they move into that, into the planning scheme and make it through this planning scheme amendment process we're talking about, that they actually have um, a level of protection. Councillor Cordova. Uh, thank you, nearly done, Mayor. Um, and I might have got my trees backwards there. So there was one tree that that met three of the criteria, which we were referring to just then. And then there was another tree which appears to have been removed as a result of road construction. And it's it's a very similar question that to me that um, firstly, it's anathema to a significant tree register. You know, it kind of begs the question, what's the point of, of having one? And what's the point of keeping it so exclusive if in fact a road construction team can come in and, and knock it down? Um, to me, that's a great abrogation of our of our responsibility as councillors to have um, make, made a robust significant tree register. I'm not casting any aspersions on staff. I think it's on the councillors to protect trees in line with the community wishes. So I was just hoping for maybe a bit more detail about what happened with that construction uh, situation. Ms Quinn. Through you, Mayor, I think that question um, is probably more related to planning. So Tasha Tyler-Moore may have a better answer. Ms Tyler-Moore, are you familiar with that? Um, Three, uh, yes, Mayor. The, it was to do with the Samalese Road intersection upgrade and it was unavoidable to be able to remove the tree um, and this is always one of the difficulties between um, growth in a municipality or growth in an urban area and some of the things that have to go, so that was unavoidable. They did um, do some additional planting to offset that tree, um, but... Certainly agree that the importance of the significant trees to try and avoid uh, the register is to try and avoid the removal of those as much as possible. Um, but in that instance, it couldn't be avoided. Thank you. Um, Thank you. That's yeah. Over. yeah, I'll just um, I'll just finish my contribution by saying that we're in a climate and biodiversity emergency. And again, it, it's such a great shame that we look at this through the prism of a human centric hegemonic kind of dominion approach where we are manipulating and destroying our environment and we call it development, but in fact, it's coming at the expense of our human health and well-being. It's certainly coming at the expense of our children's well-being and their future. And I think, you know, when we think about some of the things that, that have to go in the name of uh, development, Right now, we have this very exclusive significant tree policy uh, where I feel like there are far too few trees that are that are making it through this process. And I will be strongly advocating um, for strengthening that. And I think that the people of Kingborough have already spoken quite loudly and quite clearly about the significance that they place on protecting trees in our municipality. So that's why we need a street tree strategy. And that's why we need to strengthen this policy so that it's not just okay. one uh, continuation. Can I just say you're straying? We're sitting as a planning authority right now and you keep straying away 
from the topic at hand. So I'll just draw you back to that and um, our meeting procedures around sitting as a planning authority, if you don't mind. So just a reminder for yourself and other councillors who are yet to speak, please. Thank you, Mayor. I do appreciate that. And um, look, I, I think I've said my piece. And again, I want to thank the staff. They do a tremendous job and, and I do appreciate all that they do. And I hope that we can work together to improve this situation. Thank you, Mayor.